If you were here in February of 1851, you would have witnessed one of the most violent and brutal massacres in Old West history. That day, six people lost their lives, and they lost their lives brutally. So, Roy Zoltman was with a wagon train, and they were heading west, as a lot of different families were. And they were running low on provisions, and they needed to make a shortcut. And everybody in the wagon train, regardless of the problems they were having, said the same thing, don't do it, right? Do not take the chance on going out because there's savages out there and you know, they're, they're not gonna have a problem doing whatever they wanna do. But Roy's made that fateful mistake. Now remember he had six children and one unborn, eight and a half months pregnant wife and they decided to make that journey, that shortcut, the shortcut six of their lives that day. Now the first thing I want to show you is, is when they made that shortcut, we're on the Mormon Battalion Trail, okay? Now what you had to do was come up this ramp, which could take all day. And one of the most incredible things if you look on here is you see where the wagon trains have carved into this volcanic rock right in here. They also say if you metal detect in this area, then you will find nails from horseshoes. Because if you can imagine those beasts of burden coming up this hill and what it took to make this treacherous climb up this hill. You know, if you look out in the field, how peaceful it is today. But you can imagine wagon trains and Old West. And other than that tractor over there, you can imagine that this hadn't changed a lot since 1851. And you look at these boulders that are stacked right up here, right? And what do you see? other than that cross. What a hell of a hill to climb up. Now it took them all day to do this. By the time they got that, that wagon up this grade right here, they were beat. They'd had enough. And so Roy's wife, again, eight and a half months pregnant, Charity, put on some beans, and in the distance, Lorenzo, the oldest boy, saw some Indians come in this direction. And those Indians came upon him. And uh, at first, we're pretty friendly, and it was pretty casual discussion. And they talked about, did they have any tobacco? And they did, so he gave them tobacco, right? And they, they wanted cornmeal. And you know, he's, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't afford to give me any cornmeal. The reason that they were taking this, this trail was because they were running low on provisions. And they had, you know, it's people that they had to feed. And so the Indians just helped themselves. They got to the back and just started taking whatever. And he told them that, you know, they, they couldn't have that. You know, he needed that to get them the 90 miles they needed to go. The Indians wandered off and they, and they were talking amongst each other, right? And, you know, the family didn't realize what they were talking about, but what those Indians were discussing, Yavapai, right? What they were discussing was who was going to kill who. And so 
They let out a blood curling scream and all hell broke loose. And I'm telling you what, as much as you can imagine a horror film today, the reality of what really happened here was absolutely unbelievable. The Yavapai had uh, what I'd like to say it'd be a, a war baseball bat, right? They had these clubs. And they clubbed two of the children to death. And after they clubbed Lorenzo, they threw him down this very cliff for dead. Now one thing Lorenzo did was he didn't die that day. He came back too, and he went and found the wagon train to tell them what happened. Now, Mary and were forced to have their shoes taken off, their bonnets taken off, and they had to walk 90 miles. And they were put basically in slavery. And that night, the Indians basically made fun of them when they tried to feed them of why they were so emotional after they had seen their parents and their siblings brutally beaten to death. Some of them were knived, some of them were shot with arrows, and others were clubbed. And it was gruesome if you can imagine them killing an eight and a half month pregnant woman. Kind of reminds you a little bit of the Charlie Manson type deal, right? I mean, what kind of person would do that, right? Because that's a little different than just surviving, right? Now, the youngest, Mary, she ended up dying later with the wallopi of starvation, traded to a different tribe. And they actually treated her like one of the family. They, they, for some reason, decided that uh, they liked her, I guess, and they treated her like family. So that tattoo that's here and here, the five markings, and our arms, a lot of people sig think that signifies a slave. In all reality, it did not. What that signified was friend, and that she actually was a member of that tribe. And so, so what do those tattoos mean? Those tattoos mean that you'll be able to find your kin in, in the, great, the great world above, right? So you'll be able to find your brother or sister by your markings on your chin, right? And she really didn't want to leave because Lorenzo had heard that there was white women with these Indian camps. And so he got the government involved and the government actually went in and they actually traded for her. Now, it cost them a white stallion. Now, it cost them a white stallion because that was the most prized possession. But you know what? Didn't really want to go. She actually fought because she had, for some reason, decided that was going to be her life. Now, she ended up being uh, 66 years old before she passed in Texas. And she married a rancher and she had two children. Now, she had physical ailments the rest of her life. And I don't know if that comes from, you know, the life that she lived, uh, the stress that was put on her over that situation. That had to have been horrific because you know things happen that you don't even want to think about, but it did, right? And so there she was. But she lived and she went on tour and she has books out there. You can read about her and her life because she became pretty much a celebrity at that time also because she did have the tattoos on her face and her arms. They didn't go away. Now, she would cover it sometimes with makeup. Now, a lot of people ask, well, why didn't they... When Lorenzo went to the wagon train, right? Why didn't they get a search party for the girls? And the answer to that is kind of funny, right? The reason for that is, is that this wasn't in the United States at that time. This was in Mexico. And they had no jurisdiction. That would have been 
the United States over there, right? So, they had no jurisdiction over this area. So they couldn't. So, politics kept them from finding those girls at that time. You know, what a hellacious, you know, I'm glad this is here. I'm glad that they, somebody spent the time to put this here. Because this is our history. And then the stage ran throughout the valley and it went all the way through. And Gila Bend, if you'll find out, is basically a big intersection of, of what was going on. It was an intersection of travel throughout uh, this part of the Southwest. And this was a trail. This was a very used trail. You can tell by the way that the, uh, the wagon wheels have, uh, have scarred the rock. It's a cre you have to get out here and experience this. The road coming out here, nine of the 10 miles are beautiful. The last mile completely sucks, but you have to get out here and experience this and feel this because you can't just see it in a book because you can see, you can see the West out there. It's been another fascinating story about the wild, wild west. Jace Wreck.